Hello, flat earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. Being able to see a sunset twice is an argument used by both flat earthers and defenders of the spinning ball earth. Anyone can make this observation with a clear view across the surface. We just watch the sunset while we are on the ground or at ground level, sea level. And then once the sun has set, we can rise up to a higher elevation and see the sun come into view again and watch it set again. So let's have a look at both of these scenarios from the ball earth perspective and the flat earth perspective and see which one is more logical, which one makes more sense. So let's have a look at the ball earth scenario first where we are on top of our ball looking straight ahead at the sunset. Of course the first problem we have when representing this in a two-dimensional uh, external frame of reference is that uh, we cannot do anything to the scale that it is said to be in the heliocentric model in which we are on a tiny earth looking at a massive sun 93 million miles away. So it is just assumed or calculated with mathematics that the sun appears smaller just because it's much, much further away. And we are led to believe that we see the sun set because we are on a ball that is rotating away from the sun. So here we are on top of the spinning ball earth looking straight ahead represented by the green arrow and as we rotate the sun sinks below our horizon apparently. So when we rise up from the ground to see the sun set again represented by the red arrow this means that we essentially have to be looking down the curve of the ball earth in order to see the sun again as the earth continues to rotate and we see the sun sink below our horizon once again. And of course the assumption here is that the horizon is created by the physical form of the land. We see a flat horizon in front of us but we are told or led to believe that this is due to the curvature of the earth dropping away from us. So logically when we rise up to see the second sunset we are then looking down further to see the sun set once more. But from the flat earther's point of view it is understood that the relative size and distance of the sun is something that can be described in the language of mathematics and only assumed because we cannot physically measure the distance from the earth to the sun. And it is also understood that when a representation of the earth and the sun in the heliocentric model is presented in this two-dimensional format with an external frame of reference, it is not taking into account the observations we can make with anything else in the sky that appears to head down towards the horizon as it becomes further away from us while maintaining a consistent height above the earth. As we all know that an aircraft or something in the sky flying away from us will appear to sink towards the horizon as it travels into the distance. This is simply an indisputable fact of how a landscape appears to us when we look directly ahead. In the same way that we will observe a row of street lamps all the same height sinking towards the horizon from our perspective. And this immediately brings to light another contradiction. If we are to assume that the horizon in front of us that cuts off more distant objects because of curvature, 
then of course we should also see a similar amount of curvature from left to right. But we know from experience that we can pan across a vast vista of several miles and see no bending of that horizon whatsoever, even though we are looking ahead maybe only a few kilometers before the apparent curve in front of us. So even if you want to use the argument that because of our minuscule size on this massive ball Earth, we would see a flat plane all around us, it is still highly illogical to say that we can see evidence of curvature just three or four miles in front of us while we cannot see any bending of down of the horizon that may be 10, 20 miles across. However, if you are of the opinion that science as we know it and mathematics is absolute proof that we live on a ball, let me try and explain with a very simple example how the flat earther sees beyond the mathematics. We can watch a car go past and we can measure its speed. And by measuring its speed, we can make all sorts of predictions about how long it will take to travel a particular distance. We can even use physics, if we know the weight and the speed of the car, to predict how much damage might be done to the car if it crashes into a solid wall. These are all sound scientific principles and calculations that can be made, as we do with things like gravity, with objects falling to the earth at a predictable rate of acceleration. This is not denied by flat earthers, but what is understood is that it has never been proven that the mass of the earth alone is what creates that pulling force. And just as we can calculate the speed and distance that a car might travel, we do not know until we look under the hood what is actually powering that car, what is causing the acceleration. It could be a combustion engine, it could be an electric motor, it could be something else. We simply do not know. And that's the same with gravity. We can measure it, we can predict it, we can go on about the rates of acceleration that certain objects might have towards the Earth, but we simply do not know. It has never been proven categorically that the mass of the Earth is what is pulling everything towards the Earth. In fact, while it can be assumed with mathematics that the ball Earth is a specific volume and density, therefore having a particular mass, again, this is something that can never be proven by going down into the center of the Earth to find out what exactly it is made of. So again, we are down to conjecture with mathematics that simply cannot be verified with physical proof. So the point here is to understand that yes, we can describe what we see and make predictions and calculations based upon that, but we cannot know for sure what causes it. So given that conventional science and mathematics has no proof of what actually causes things like gravity or the apparent spin of the Earth, then we are free to consider alternative options, even if we do not know or understand how it works. It's also worth pointing out that a mathematician, Bernhard Riemann, in the 1800s uh, worked out how geometry can be used to project a sphere to a plane. And of course, given the laws of mathematics, we can also project a plane to a sphere. So here we have a perfect example of how a flat Earth can be projected onto a sphere with geometry and 
we get the same results. So which one is the reality? That is the question. So then, people who are genuinely interested in knowing for themselves what happens with horizons will go out and experiment. And when they do, they will observe that it is light bending or diffracting that causes horizons over a flat surface, as we can see here with the runner's legs being cut off at a short distance when the camera is at ground level. And we can see the light playing tricks and creating optical illusions and cutting off all the objects in the distance, even though we know there is no actual physical curvature. This simple observation can lead us to understand that the light reflected off the surface into our eyes and the angles of incidence at which that light is reflected is what causes the horizon to rise to eye level with a band of convergence where everything merges. So with all this in mind, especially the fact that the horizon for any observer is always at that observer's eye level, give or take some refraction, diffraction, and what have you, Let's watch some drone footage of a sunset filmed at an altitude of about 80 feet. And then the drone is taken up to 400 feet to watch the sunset again, while the horizon remains at eye level. And then it's up to you to decide what you know, what you believe, and what you can prove. And while you contemplate that, I'd like to leave you with these sunset scenes across the Andaman, accompanied by a piece of music called Ocean Chorus, which is one of two tracks on a 20-minute compilation ambient music titled Earth Rhythms that will help you relax, meditate and find inner peace. And if it resonates with you, you can download the entire compilation for a very small fee at phuketword.com slash music. Thank you very much. Thank you.